Hello everyone, my name is Drew. Today what I want to do is look at an Intel Edison uh, Internet of Things device. Uh, this small chip will allow us to write code, also known as sketches, and take in information from various sensors and send that information over any network that we're connected to. So I have an Intel Edison. It is connected to an uh, Edison kit or for Arduino. Uh, this is the board that allows us to connect to the host uh, desktop so we can write sketches and then send that information or download it to the chip itself. Uh, because this is designed uh, to be compatible with Arduino, uh, we can have uh, various shields that we can place on top of the board and that will allow us to uh, connect uh, various kinds of sensors. What I have connected right now is a temperature sensor. Um, the shield and the sensor comes from... Uh, the Studio Grove. Um, it is a starter kit that comes with various uh, input and output devices, uh, and I will link to all of this stuff. Um, let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is write some code that will take in the uh, information from the temperature sensor and uh, present it on a, a, a web page. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm turning the Intel Edison chip into a mini web server and uh, any device that connects to that web server uh, should be able to get the current temperature uh, wherever this device is. Okay, so let's look over the code. And the first thing we'll see here is that we need to define an SSID and a password for that network in order to connect to a network so that we can send out information uh, when a client connects to us. So I, mine is hidden. I have defined these uh, Above line seven, so in line five and six, we have a SSID variable. And that SSID is the name of your network, um, and the password uh, likewise. Uh, both of those are defined above, and uh, you will see that when uh, I'm going to post this code on GitHub, and it will be linked uh, in the description below. And you will see those two uh, variables. You will need to change those if you keep them as the defaults. You're just going to get an error. Um, the next thing of interest is a constant. We are going to take in analog information uh, from A0 or analog input 0. Uh, that is the uh, connector that we have the temperature sensor plugged into. And so from then on out, we can just use uh, pin temp or pin temperature uh, instead of actually using the, the literal uh, uh, representation for that, that analog uh, input. If we want to change it later, we change this in one place and uh, we just keep going. The next uh, definition is a constant uh, B. This is, uh, I'm not going to really get in, into this. This is a constant that is used to convert uh, or it's used as, as a part of the process of converting the temperature sensor's internal resistance into a Kelvin temperature, which then is converted into a Celsius temperature. And we'll get into that uh, in just a little bit. Uh, in order to <clears throat> take in connections from the outside world, from clients, from web browsers, we do need to set up a Wi-Fi server, and we're doing so on port 8080. This can be any port that you want to use. Um, we cannot use, by default, uh, port 80, which is normally used for web servers, because the uh, Edison module uh, uses that to display information about itself, its, uh, its host name, and some other information about itself. So that is, by, by default, it is being consumed. And if we just use 80 here, uh, we won't get what we think we should. Uh, probably just going to end up er erroring out. Okay, so in our setup, which is the first thing that we do after being uh, powered on or reset, what I want to do is I want some indication that uh, uh, things are going well and that we are running setup. So what I've done is on uh, pin 13, which is the built-in LED on the board. It's not an actual other pin uh, that we need to plug something into. But it's an LED on the board next to the chip. And I want to set that for output so that when we do go get into setup, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to turn that light out. And after we get through, we go through and initialize everything and we're done with setup, we can then turn that LED back on. So when I run the sketch, I want to see that light go out. Then I want to see it a few seconds later come back on. That tells me that we successfully got through setup and that we should be going through and, and going through our, our loop uh, function uh, soon thereafter. In the setup, we do have to communicate with the uh, the uh, temperature sensor over the uh, serial port. 
uh, or serial data, and we're doing so at 9600 bog. Um, this line of code was taken directly from the sample for the uh, temperature sensor, and so here it is. Uh, we're going to fire up the uh, the serial and, and wait for that port to open. Um, and that waiting for that port to open is uh, this code here. We'll just as long as we don't have serial communication, we just sit there and wait for it to uh, fire up. The next thing we're going to do is pretty much the same thing for Wi-Fi. We're asking Wi-Fi. Um, uh, is there a shield? Do we have Wi-Fi capability? And if we do, uh, fine. If we don't, we just stop. So we do a while true. If uh, we're going to be using Wi-Fi only and we're not going to be connecting in any way to a hard, hardwired connection, um, if we don't have the capability, just stop. Um, connect to the Wi-Fi network. If status is connected, we're good to go. Otherwise, we want to fire up uh, the Wi-Fi capability and this is very important this is where we pass in the ssid of the network to connect to as well as the password required um, as long as the uh the wi-fi is not connected we wait for 10 seconds and then we try again so and that is why i want to see that led turn off when we enter setup and when it turns back on the only thing left to do is to fire up our, our server on port 8080 and begin serving uh, once that happens uh, we enter our loop and the loop is very simple. I want to collapse this code for uh, just a moment. If we have a client connected to our server, that's awesome. We ex execute the code in the if block on 40, line 46. If we don't, we just loop. We just sit there doing nothing. Um, once a client is connected, a web browser is connected, uh, we then go through. We disregard all the headers, you know, uh, all that information that the browser is sending to us, like uh, the user agent and I can accept this and that and the other. It's not really important to us. This is a very simple example. So the only thing that we do here is while the client is connected and it's available and it's not sending us additional information, we have detected the uh, the blank line at the end of its headers, its request headers. Then we go through and we start printing out to the, uh, to the uh, response, to the email, uh, as soon as you can, close this. And then most importantly, uh, we do want you to the client to refresh uh, every five seconds. So in in this document, in this HTML document, which uh, is very 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 simple, <laughs> uh, we have an HTML document. We have a body contained therein, and what we want to do is print out in a size seventy two point font is the temperature in Celsius. So we print out that temperature. The temperature is calculated up here. So the first thing we do in order to get the temperatures, we read that analog input on port or on pin A0. We then get the resistance. We calculate the resistance of the uh, sensor and then we convert that resistance into a temperature. Uh, so first we convert it actually into a Kelvin uh, uh, temperature and then uh, convert it there, uh, thereafter into uh, Celsius. So we're gonna display um, the, uh, the temperature in a large font and, a, and technically an HTML document, and every five seconds thereafter, we're going to ask the, the browser, the client, to refresh and, and display this continuously. Um, once we have uh, served our HTML document, we then hit a break uh, in the while loop, and that will cause us to delay uh, for a moment. And then after that, we uh, we get the browser the time to receive the data, and then we, we close the connection in, until we get another connection or until the browser refreshes based on this uh, this header here. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. Well, before I do that, actually, I just want to click on verify and verify that everything in the code is up and running. Uh, and it is. Uh, we're going to use 92K of storage space. And now make sure that I am on the correct port. And I am connected to an Intel Edison. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload it. Uh, I'm gonna click the upload button and let's watch for the LED on pin 13 built in. Watch for it to be extinguished as we enter setup. And this can take a few moments, so there it goes. And now that same LED will turn back on when we are ready to begin serving the temperature.
Okay, our LED has just come back on. That's telling us that we have exited setup. We should be uh, in the loop now, and we should be able to serve the current temperature. Uh, for whatever reason, when you first run the server, it gives you a very low temperature. It's not 16 in here. Uh, 23 degrees Celsius, that's about right. It's just over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So now it's going back up to 24. Uh, with myself in the room, as and as well as while we're using the board itself, that will warm up uh, the sensor and, and everything else as well. So you may want to just give it a little bit of time uh, to come around to itself to get uh, settled down. Okay, folks, so what we have done, uh, we have taken an Intel Edison uh, module, uh, just this little device here, we've connected it to a host board so that we can connect to a further a host computer. Uh, we've written a little bit of code uh, that will take in information uh, from a temperature sensor, and we are using that information uh, to relay it out to uh, any, any client that wants to connect. And you can see here, we are 23.39 degrees Celsius, 24.35. Uh, of course, the temperature reading and the refresh is going to be a little bit off between clients. So I've got 24.17. Okay, so they, they caught up to each other. Uh, but the the amount of time uh, and the difference between them refreshing is still going to be all right. There you go. Um, so any of this information that you put on Intel Edison, one of these devices, uh, one of these Internet of Things devices, uh, can be used uh, to directly uh, give yourself information. You can collect information from a sensor and have it post to an internal website or or any website really. Um, and that that would be sharing information between itself and maybe uh, a home automation server, uh, another device, so that your home automation system can take in uh, all these different temperatures, humidity, uh, barometric pressure, maybe even wind speed, any information that you need. And that system can make better decisions for you uh, based on what, what the temperature and the environment is outside and inside. Uh, maybe you can open windows. Uh, uh, closed blinds, uh, what have you. And as we go on, uh, I'll be developing uh, more projects like this. This is a very simple one, and this is a prototyping. What I do want to get into is actually removing the Intel Edison uh, module, uh, connecting it to a battery pack or uh, a power pack, really, and then connecting sensors directly to it and mounting it uh, uh, in such a way that it can actually be more, much more useful. I plan to have multiple devices, one in e each room as well as uh, outside, so that information can uh, trickle in uh, to my home automation system and uh, uh, be able to do auto automatically do things for me to make me more comfortable uh, so my house is working for me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please click the thumbs up button. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you would like for me to send you additional videos when they come out, uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thank you.